Hey guys, this is Eskimo Pool, and we are here to start a new Let's Play series for the Sony PlayStation Network, originally released on the original PlayStation, uh, Vagrant Story. Uh, it came out of roughly 2000, as you can see from the 2000 square right here. Um, I've never actually played the game, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. Uh, it's got plenty of good reviews, my friends like it, uh, they tell me it has a steep learning curve, they say it has a pretty good story, so I want to check it out. So, without any further ado, let's just get started, shall we? And, oh, okay, apparently circle is select in this game. They did that for a couple of Final Fantasy games. I think it was 7 that did it first. At least the one that I know of. Anyways, I'll be quiet for cutscenes. Well, they don't waste any time getting us into a fight here, and for some reason I can't move with my analog stick here. Okay, let's try that again. Oh, there we go. Now it's working. Alright, let's try attacking. Um, okay, what, what attacks? I don't know what attacks here. Um, Okay, not first person. Square doesn't do anything. Okay, there we go. Um, can we show how to do a... No, okay. Apparently... Apparently start can... Or X cancels. Let's uh, try this here. Uh, 
Sure, let's... Okay, it's on, whatever that does. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm not really sure what's going on here, but I'm dying. Okay, there we go. Okay, uh, so we can apparently target different body parts. Let's start with the legs here, since they have the lowest HP. Oh, okay, that appears to uh, reduce his movement. Alright, so let's see. Let's, uh... So you can attack everyone's individual body parts. Okay, that's kind of weird, but okay. Let's see if we can't get this guy's legs to break so he can't go anywhere, which kind of worked. I guess you can just target anything to kill these guys. Let's just go for the arms real quick, see what happens if we go for the arms. Okay, that killed one of his arms, hopefully. Okay, so you can just kill them by attacking any part of their body. Okay, I was hoping it would have, like, uh, disabled their attacks, but maybe it's just not for this intro battle. I don't know why my controller wasn't working, right?
Okay, looks like we got a boss here right away. And he's gonna roast me to a crisp. That's not good. So this is a kind of weird uh, intro. Apparently, as far as I can tell, those uh, those or damn, I keep on pressing X. As far as I can tell, uh, Sydney and uh, Hirder or whatever his name was, I think it was something with an H. They're traitors to the dukedom or something, and they wanted to kidnap the the royal son or something. At least as far as I can tell, but. I'm not really sure, and I could have swore I got your... Okay, okay, you have 18 HP, and if I did, eight... okay, that should kill you right there, right? Or not, that seemed to restore your HP a little bit. Uh, let's try your... your body. Well, can I get another attack in here? Okay, it's not really seeming to do a whole lot of damage to this guy. Let's see, uh... Here, let me see some... Okay. I was gonna go to my menu and check something out, but... I guess that's not gonna happen. Oh, we killed him. Kind of a delayed reaction, but... That's one way to start the game with a giant dragon boss fight. Okay, I'm not entirely sure what to think so far. I might have to get used to I might have to get used to the battle system first, since it's uh, disconcerting pressing circle to select and X to cancel. So that might take me a few tries, but seems kind of neat so far. I mean, the very first thing that happens is a bunch of soldiers burning prisoners to death off screen. So that's well, they get right into it. That's for sure. Oh, are we supposed to go past here? And I wonder what those guys are looking for in something about Leamon. I wonder if that's a person or an artifact or... I'm not sure.
Okay, so Leomond. Let's see, old town with a history of 2,000 years. Walls have been seen in many battles. They are stronger than the mightiest forts of Valendia. And as the sun wheels through the sky, the beauty of their shifting color surpasses that of any palace. So it's basically like a fort. Let's see, the grand cathedral that towers over the town center is a symbol of Leomond's indomitable spirit, and it is the holy ground of the devout Iochus priesthood. At its height, Leomond was a thriving community with more than 5,000 people. 25 years ago, a great earthquake brought the chapter in Leomond's history to a close. So, I can't tell if it was supposed to be a fort or like a... I can't tell what it was supposed to be. Okay, so Agent Riot headed out for Leomon before noon. The reports are vague and we cannot divide the possibility of inaccuracies. There's only one path to infiltrate Leomon, the office believes. Okay, so somebody escaped to Leomon and I guess we're gonna have to go after him? I, I guess they're talking about Sydney. Oh wait, no, um, the main character's name is supposed to be like Ashley Riot or something, so maybe something about him? So that's why everything's all blocked off. Yeah, what the heck, what the heck is a Mullen camp? Sydney Glosterot? That's well, a quite the last name there. From what I hear, this is uh, the storyline for this game is very uh, politic heavy, and I'm not really a political type of guy, so if I miss out on a lot of stuff, so be it. Just so you guys know. Yeah, you mean the part where he took an arrow to his chest and survived? So he's telepathic? the uh, right there and he's not bleeding at all okay they sent men to monitor the abandoned mine shaft they were all found dead okay and oh yeah they said the two uh, watchmen are found dead unless these are different dead bodies see men were murdered with swords with a knight's wounds so they died by their own hands so they committed suicide we have taken the bodies into our custody and our specialists are continuing the examination so basically like an old school um Autopsy reports going on. So they were killed by swords, but they suicided. 
I think. Well, it seems pretty strange, especially the part, you know, where he's still alive. Okay, so let's see if we can get some controls down here. Okay, square jumps, which I'm not sure if that was actually in or available when I was battling, but it might have been. Okay, X puts your weapon away. Okay, triangle goes to the, the screen here. See, do we even have anything equipped? We got a sword. Bandages. That's weird armor, but okay. Let's see. Necklace with the root of the locust priesthood. Um, not sure. Wait, hang on. Go back here real quick. Okay. Uh, class affinity type. Okay. Okay. Class was to the the one we were just at. Okay. So, what am I on right now, anyways? Oh. No, I wanted to have that on. There we go. Alright, let's check this out real quick. Uh, let's see. So, we're gonna do less damage, apparently, to phantom monsters and dragons. Um... I'm not sure if that means we're going to take less damage from dark or do more damage to dark. I can't tell. Same with light. And same with physical. And, okay. I'm confused. Okay, this weapon that we have on appears to have negative in pretty much everything. So, I'm not sure... Yeah, I have no idea what we're trying to look for in these stats here. Okay, I need to stop pressing X to get out of things. Okay, attach gems. I'm assuming that just uh, enhances them and stuff. And you can disassemble them, okay. Let's see, uh, I should go back in there? Um, no, I wanted to go to options. Oh, never mind, we are in options, never mind. Oh, and, okay, never mind. There we go. Oh, that's just showing all the uh, weapons we have and stuff. Okay. Uh, let's see. Do we have two weapons? Apparently. Unless that's just what the class of the weapon is. Okay, that appears to be something that we can uh, use to make weapons later. These appear to be the gems that we're looking at. Oh, and here's, uh, okay, heal items. Okay, so... Lowers risk by 25 points. I have no idea what that is. Poison, numbness, okay. Seems very standard. Alright, let's see if we can equip that other sword real quick, see what happens. Um... Okay, apparently not. So why do we have another sword if we can't use it? Okay, I'm not really sure here. Um, let's see, status... Okay, yeah, so that's how much damage we're gonna take versus, like, uh, the various affinities. Okay. Um. I can't tell if all of our body parts have different, like, HP values, or. I'm not really sure what's going on there. Let's see, map. Where are we? Okay, we're in the wine cellar. 
data. I'm assuming that saves your game and stuff. Okay, I had a save point, obviously. Options. Okay, um... Not really sure. Uh, let's see. Eh, okay, not a whole lot in here to do. Uh, what is the score? Oh, uh, music, okay. As far as I can tell. Okay, this appears to be a bestiary. This might be for, uh, oh, missions. I, I, was, I was thinking it might be for mini games, but apparently it's for missions. I guess those might be considered missions or mini games. Okay, let's see. We got. Well, looks like there's a lot of stuff to keep track of in here. And what's in this quick manual? Okay, uh, let me check this out real quick here. Um, okay, so... Section explains basic game controls, blah blah blah. Normal mode. Yeah, okay, pressing X appears to put you in normal mode, which puts away your weapons and stuff. Let's see. That appears to just move around and change perspective. Okay, right stick. Oh, you can uh, rotate the camera. Okay. Select button, zooms in and out. Start button. Goes to the uh, first person view. Okay, circle, execute command. That's kind of weird. Circle executes commands and draws weapon. But X is open doors, move stuff, and do other stuff. That's kind of weird. Let's see. Square jump, triangle display, L1. Wait, I thought they said, uh... I thought they said the right analog stick was to move the camera. But apparently we have shortcuts for, like, uh, I'm assuming, like, skills. And I guess we can walk slowly, that might be useful for like crossing cracked floors or something. Not really sure. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Oh, I already did all this, okay. Okay, game modes. Okay, normal mode, because Ashley does not have his sword and shield readied, he can use both hands. Okay, so it's basically used for like climbing and stuff and exploring. Okay, uh, battle mode, so we can attack. Okay, so we can always use defensive abilities, magic, and items, no matter what mode we're in. That helps. Let's see, manipulate items when we're in normal mode. We have to put our sword away in order to manipulate the stuff. Okay, run and jump in either mode, as well as perform basic actions like. Opening doors and chests. Okay, that's that's so we don't gotta put our sword away every time we want to open a chest. That's nice. Let's see. Oh, so we recover HP and MP when we're in normal mode. Okay, what is the risk gauge though? Yeah, this episode uh, this episode might be kind of slow because I'm just gonna be going through all this uh, stuff, and I'm gonna go through it with you guys. That way, you, uh, if you guys haven't played the game, you guys can uh, see what I'm going through here. So, next episode we should have more action and stuff. Uh, just this episode where. Gotta figure out what the heck is going on. Okay, um... Phantom points. Uh, what is phantom points? Using weapons and shields in battle increases their phantom points. Slowly decreases when they're in battle mode. Equipping armor prevents damage from attacks. Let's see, uh... Oh, it also reduces beneficial magic like healing and stuff okay so you basically have to unequip all your stuff if you wanna get a good healing spell off okay that's kinda weird but okay okay status effects this should be easy to be enough to figure out see strength down that's exp explanatory strength up explanatory See, I want to see it. I'm going to look around for anything that might be kind of weird. Okay, agility. That's easy enough. Quick in. Movement speed increase. Okay. 
Silent, can't cast spells, paralysis, he's enough, poison, numbness, uh, battle abilities cannot be used temporarily. Okay, so that's kind of like a stun effect almost. We're also another version of silence. Curse, um, strength, intelligence, and agility are all decreased. Regeneration, basically regen, okay, uh, magic ward, so that could be good for protecting ourselves from magic attacks. Item ability decrease. Okay, so everything's weakened. Everything's strengthened. Okay, status abnormality is affecting infinity. Attach air. So you do more damage with earth air, air attacks and less with earth. Okay. Okay, same for all these other things. Incompatible status abnormalities. When it is possible to have multiple status abnormalities, some are incompatible and cannot be in effect concurrently. Okay, so basically, the, like the strength up, strength down, stuff like that. Okay, that's easy enough. Okay, let's see. Damage effects. Okay, we want to look at this. Hit location damage. Ashley and many of his opponents in the game have hit locations. Each location's health is calculated separately. Okay, excellent. Okay, um. Ashley's profile on the bottom left changes color with his condition. The condition readings are meant as a battle aid and do not affect Ashley's performance. However, negative side effects will cure when a hit location is dying. When a location is dying, special status abnormalities are triggered that dramatically reduce his performance. Okay, so right arm, we have less attack. Left arm, less, uh, less parry. The head, we can't cast spells. Okay, what is risk though? Uh, accumulates while the targeting spear is open and only recovers when Ashley is in normal mode. Okay, I'm not sure what risk is. And if her legs and we have less movement speed. Okay, so I get it then. Um, your HP is has nothing to do with your your body parts. Those just give you status effects if they're dead, but it doesn't really affect you that much unless they uh, get like your arm, which reduces your uh, Okay, so it doesn't... Okay, so basically your HP is not depending on your body parts. Okay, that's all that matters as far as I'm, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, of these effects, only the move 50% status of abnormality applies to Ashley's foes. However, if he reduces the foe's hit location to dying, he can disable some opponent... Okay, so yeah, aim for their legs and stuff, and then go slower, aim for their other body parts, they might not be able to cast some spells or something. Okay, these status abnormalities are remedied when the dying hit location is healed to bad or better condition. Use magic or items to recover them. Okay, so that seems fair enough. Okay, that seems uh, easy enough. Okay, risk. Effect on chance to hit and evade. As risk increases, our chance to hit with normal attacks and break our... Okay, so risk is basically can't hit stuff easier. Uh, so it's kind of like a Berserker mode almost, except you lose effectiveness. Kind of like a stamina, I guess. Okay. As risk increases, so does the amount of damage. Decreases, damage received drops. HP recovery spells like heal. Okay, so that kind of offsets like the, the magic defense you got by higher risk is higher heal. Okay. Okay, so yeah, you take more damage. You take more damage, you do less damage, and we have a higher chance to get into critical hit. Okay, so... Doesn't really seem all that beneficial. Alright, magic. I'm assuming this is pretty simple. So use grab a grimoire. Transfers knowledge of magic to the main character. They're in the city of Leomon, so I'm assuming most of the game is going to take place in this uh, Leomon place. Sometimes we have to kill somebody for it, okay. Any grimoire can be used once to cast a spell it contains. Okay, so once you use it, it casts it once, and then you automatically order the spell. Okay, that works. Different types of grimoire. Hang on one second. Okay, different types of grimoire. Okay, basically healing magic, um, a light spell, 
a strength down spell, and a whole bunch of others that we don't know about. Okay, so that seems pretty easy. Let's see, how much more do we got to go here? Okay. Chain abilities. Extra attacks triggered when you press the O, triangle, or square button at the exact time you land a regular attack. Um, you must assign buttons to them under the battle abilities. As Ashley uses battle abilities, he will gain new experience points towards acquiring new abilities. You may choose new techniques from a list of chain and defense abilities. Every successful use earns one experience point. Okay, uh, let's see. Confirm the number of experience points needed to learn the next technique, blah blah blah. Okay, so I guess we couldn't use anything before that first uh, dragon, unless there's another boss that they're talking about. But then again, I don't think those two fodder guards would have given you enough uh, experience for it anyways. Okay, assign any chain abilities. Choose chain abilities under battle abilities. When this is displayed, select ability, you wish to move with the cursor. Icon indicating the assign button will appear next to the ability. Okay, that's using them. Okay, using them. Press the assign button at the exact moment that actually lands a hit, so you gotta be kinda hair trigger timing. When the ability when the, when, the, when, when you land a hit, exclamation of mark appears, press the chain ability button. Okay, so Okay, you keep on doing that as long as your timing is good. Alright. But you have to alternate between the different abilities. Okay. I wonder if you can go like... Okay, never mind. I was going to say, I wonder if you can go circle, triangle, circle, but that... Because I thought that uh, right button said X, but I guess you can. Okay, so... Okay, it gets harder to chain them the more you do, and your risk increases. Okay. Probably going to keep the timing on, since that'll make it easier. Um... Chaining is ineffective against hurting foes. You can still do it, but you only get increased damage. Well, isn't that the point of it anyways? Maybe, uh, different chains do, like, different status effects? I don't know. Okay, uh, defense abilities. Special defensive techniques triggered when you press the various buttons. Okay, so they're kind of like chain abilities, except they're defensive instead of offensive. Okay, uh, exact moment the mark appears. Okay, yeah, they appear to be pretty much the same thing. Okay, break arts. Ashley's HP decrease each time he uses a break art. Okay, so it's kind of... So it's a self-sacrificial attack. Okay, that works. But you can't kill yourself with it. That, that, that's helpful. They're divided into weapon types, and... By using one weapon exclusively, you can acquire increasingly powerful break arts for that weapon type. There are four break arts for each weapon type. Okay. Okay, I'm assuming we're going to learn more about this stuff as we go on. Puzzle cubes. Strange crate-like objects called cubes. Made of wood, stone, and metal are scattered throughout Leamon. Using the X button, I'm assuming in normal mode. You can lift, push, and sack any cube within reach. As long as there's not another one on top of it. You can destroy the cubes. Cubes are useful as stepping stones. Okay, so use them for jumping to places. Okay, leaving the room re resets them. That helps. Okay, different types of cubes. Rolling cube, which you can't destroy. Roll them around. And they can't be rolled over anything, because they're apparently not very good at moving up slopes. Counter cubes, again, you can't destroy them. Okay, same thing as basically the rolling cubes there. Uh, let's see. Okay, when Ashley approaches a counter cube, a number appears above the cube. Each time the cube is pushed, the number drops one point. Okay, so you gotta, like, put them into place with a certain number of uh, pushes. Okay, push cubes. They can be destroyed, so basically the same thing as the other one, except they can be destroyed. Frictionless cubes can't be destroyed. 
slide in any direction they're pushed. Okay, yeah, so they're kind of like a uh, ice slide blocks, kind of. They keep on going until they hit something. Carry cubes. You can carry these, okay. Magnet cubes. I'm not sure what the difference between those and... Oh, the, okay, these ones can be destroyed and these ones can't, okay. Come in blue and red. Stacking cubes of a similar color cause them to... F okay. They float. Alright. Puzzle mode. We must arrange the cubes in some areas to lay them on in order to clear a path through the room. Once Ashley has cleared a path through a room, activate, enter the same room a second time will activate puzzle mode. Test how fast you can move the room cubes. Okay. Maybe you get prizes for it? I'm not really sure. Arms and armor. Okay, this is probably a little confusing. Okay, constructed by assembling a blade with a grip. Assembled weapons can be equipped. Cannot use a blade or grip without first assembling them into a weapon. See, okay, that sounds fair enough. Three grip types. Edged, blunt, and piercing. See, blade, scimitar, edge, short hill. Okay, that's basically how you, uh, Okay, so the grip doesn't do a whole lot, but the uh, the blade determines the the uh, type of edge, piercing, or blunt. Okay, fair enough. Some of the options that are set up in the item can only be used in workshops. When he's in a workshop, you can assemble and repair weapons. You can combine blades and armor at workshops to support the materials you wish to combine. Okay, and so there's multiple workshops. Okay. Attach gems, disassemble, or rename. Okay, let's see. Damage points and phantom points. Uh, let's see. Damage points reflects the amount of wear on armor and weapons. Third, damage points drop when damage points reach zero. Their effectiveness is halved. Okay. Phantom points reflect the dark energies absorbed by weapons and armor used within Leomond. It increases the use of weapon or piece of armor. When they reach max, the weapon or armor effectiveness doubles. Okay. So basically, they both have to be at full in order to be at full power. I'm assuming that I'm assuming the dark point or the phantom points uh, decrease over time. If not, then that'd be pretty cool. So you can restore DP. Okay, but whenever you repair your durability, your damage points, you you drain some of your uh, phantom points. Okay. and you lose the phantom points in battle. Okay. Affinity. Okay, elemental types. When Ashley attacks a creature, the weapon he uses, the weapon he uses will gain the affinity opposite that of the creature. Huh. So basically you as you're attacking, you automatically adapt to the situation. That's pretty cool. Huh, that's pretty neat. Weapons attack affinity is determined by that weapon's highest affinity. So... Okay. Okay, so the more you fight different enemies, the better you're going to do against them. Okay, that works out pretty well. I'm sure we'll get into this more as we go along. Okay, so that's pretty neat. Okay, simple map. I'm assuming this is pretty standard. Change the camera angle with the L1, R1. Okay, seems easy enough. Okay, this all seems pretty explanatory. Explanatory. Okay, um... 
let's do this real quick, and then we're going to end the episode here. Uh, most of the episodes aren't going to be this long, since this is a uh, blind LP. They're probably going to be closer to like 25 or 30 minutes. I just want to check all this stuff out, because people did say it was confusing, so I want to make sure I'm not uh, totally lost next time we start the game. Okay, L2 is a shortcut. Cloud zones add a boost to a jump that would normally fall short. Okay, so that's like a boost panel, kind of. And you can kind of change your direction in mid-air, but not very well. Okay, let's see. Okay, this is all pretty standard. Hit location damage tips. Damage to Ashley's hit locations could cause... Okay, I already told me about that. Oh, and just automatically healing will reduce your, uh, m make your limbs stronger, basically. Okay, that works. When risk is high, things can get dicey. Read the following. Okay. As risk increases, Ashley's chance to hit with normal attacks decreases, but as it increases, so does the amount of damage we receive, but then so does our critical hit chance. So you don't do less damage, you just do less accuracy. Okay. And you take more damage. And using chain increases the risk really fast. Okay, we all know this stuff. Break guards consume HP, okay, fair enough. Okay, so that all seems pretty standard. Alright, so... Basically a lot to absorb here. So ho hopefully you remember it all next time when we uh, come back. Uh, next time we're going to go ahead and try to go through the rest of this uh, little room right here. See if we can't accomplish anything. And see if we can't make sense of the battle system and hopefully uh, not get completely lost in it. So guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good night.